Perfect. Welcome, everybody, and I uh, hope you had a good lunch. Welcome back to this afternoon's session, and we're very excited to continue with our Microsoft uh, crew and uh, training on uh, Teams and uh, all kinds of other things. So um, my name is Jeff Whipple. I'm a digital learning lead for ASDW, and on behalf of the uh, Learn East uh, Organizing Committee, we're really excited this afternoon to have um, some wonderful, uh, so a lot of what, what we do here is really works around just having lots of support from our um, program partners. And one of those main ones, of course, is Microsoft. This afternoon, Runa and Augustina are gonna be here. They're gonna be giving us a little rundown um, on some of the new stuff that's happening in Teams. And so this afternoon, this is session C2. We're going to talk, they're going to talk about classroom management and assessment. Just a reminder that this is being recorded. Um, and uh, if you do have questions, you can put them in the text chat box as we go along. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Augustino and Runa, and away we go. Thank you, Jeff, for that introduction. Appreciate it. And hello, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome. Uh, we are going to go ahead and get started very shortly. I do just have a couple of little housekeeping tasks that I did want to take care of before we jump into our content. So first and foremost, as you've probably already noticed, we are in a Teams meeting. So this means that you do have full control over um, your microphone and your camera, for example. I will, however, ask that uh, for the duration of the session today, that we do remain on mute, and um, everybody so far is on mute, so that's that's great. But in any case, the mute button is at the very top right-hand corner of your meeting window there. It's that little microphone icon. If you find yourself unmuted for whatever reason, or if you need to unmute later on in our session during that Q&A period at the end, it is in that top right-hand corner there. <clears throat> So as we move through, um, if we can remain muted just for the sake of uh, getting through the content uh, without any potential interruptions, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. And then as I mentioned, at the end of today's session, we will be setting aside some time for um, some Q&A. So if there were any questions that were asked in the chat there, as Jeff mentioned, if there was anything that was asked in the chat that was not covered or or perhaps you didn't get an answer, we can go ahead and cover some of those during the live portion at the end of our session today. But in any case, as we move through the content, please feel free to drop in a question or a comment into the chat there. And I do have with me my colleague Runa, who will be acting as our moderator. So she will be interacting with you in the chat and providing you with 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 answers um, as the as those questions come up <clears throat> here are so for today we're going to be taking a look at um, Microsoft Teams for higher education, of course, and with a focus on um, class team management. So my name is Augustine Osores. I am a Microsoft trainer, and I will essentially be your guide today as we explore and sort of move through um, Microsoft Teams via the sort of classroom introduction. So here is a little bit of an, of an agenda on what we'll be covering exactly. We'll be doing a little bit of an introduction to Teams for Education as a whole, really understanding how Microsoft really supports um, this, this section of, of the business, as well as how we can really help educators um, contribute and create a better digital space for both themselves and for students. And that comes, of course, in the creation of a class team, which is the first thing that we're going to take a look at today in our live demonstration. Once we create that class team, we're going to create, we'll then create a class notebook as well to talk a little bit about the um, class collaboration that can happen within that notebook. So there are a ton of different sections to be covered within that one alone. And then we'll also be taking a look at the grading and assignments um, uh, period of, of <clears throat> sorry, the grading and assignments piece of um, Microsoft Teams in your classroom. So all of these things will come together uh, directly within that sort of class Teams area as we move through it. And then of course, at the end, we do have that question and answer. 
But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, Microsoft Teams for education. So Teams is your digital hub for teaching, learning, and collaboration across your institution. It is part of Office 365 Education, which also includes familiar productivity apps like OneNote, for example, and Microsoft Word. Teams brings conversations, content, and apps together into one centralized place, which streamlines your workflow <clears throat> and allows you as an instructor and an educator to create vibrant, personalized learning environments for you and your students. With Teams, you can create these by creating a collaborative classroom. You can connect faculty in learning communities and research groups, as well as streamline staff communication, all by creating these different types of teams within Microsoft Teams. This single solution can streamline a lot of your administrative tasks, save instructors time, and really teach students future ready skills all within that one um, class team. You do also have the ability to um, teach in different ways by meeting digitally with your students. Now, that this is pretty much what we're doing today. We are in a Teams meeting today. Uh, we won't be covering Teams meetings too much today as it is more of a focus on class Teams, but I did just want to mention this as a sort of option for you to keep in mind. Within your class teams, you have the ability to both create assignments and grade those assignments. So we'll be taking those are two very separate. Um, well, not super separate, but they're, they're, they're pretty linked in terms of how they work together, both assignments and grades, but they are separate sections within your class teams that you can visit and with their own host of, of different features. So in the assignments tab, you can create assignments and assign them out to the entire um, class that you have within teams. And then, of course, in the grades tab, you can view all the assignments. You can track student progress across each assignment that you have created, as well as you can sync to turn it in for similarity checks and other um, applications as well. That'll help your students achieve the results that they want on their assignments. And there is the uh, capability of actually syncing teams to student information systems with grade sync. So you'll find that the grades that you enter in with with in teams will not be a one way street. It'll work with other um, SISs that you're working with already and that you already probably have um, grades and data entered within. And as a, a, a final little call out here, I always like to mention that Teams is device A-centric. So what that means is that you can access and utilize Teams on a wide variety of devices, whether it's um, on a desktop device or on a mobile device, such as an iPhone or an Android um, <clears throat> mobile device, or even if you don't have the application installed at all, you can still access Teams via the web application by utilizing um, an internet browser like Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, for example. And this allows, um, no matter what your situation is or no matter what uh, your student situation is, they most likely will have a device that they can access Teams with. And the functionality across devices and across platforms is um, pretty similar, if not the same in a lot of cases. And if you use Teams on your desktop, for example, and then you go to use Teams on your mobile device, anything that you do will reflect regardless of which device you are on, so long as you are logged in with that same Teams account. And with that being said, we are going to go ahead and jump into that live demonstration now. I always believe that the best way to learn uh, teams, especially when working with class teams, is simply just a get right into it and <clears throat> get that firsthand experience. So without further ado, I am going to go ahead and switch over my screens here. While I do that, be reminded that we do have a that chat enabled. So again, if you have any questions or comments as we move through the content today, uh, definitely do not hesitate to drop in those those uh, questions or comments in the chat there. All right. Oops. Okay, perfect. So. 
The first thing that we're going to do, of course, today is access Teams. Today we are going to be utilizing the Teams application on the desktop. So that is exactly what I'm going to go ahead and open up right now. And now here is what my Teams application looks like. Now today we're going to be honing in, Teams is a very large application and there's a lot of different areas of Teams that you can visit and that you can access uh, many different features from. Your main navigation of Teams will happen along the left navigation rail, right along the left side here. We have a couple of different tabs that we can visit. We have our activity tab, the chat, Teams assignments, calendar, calls, and files. So today we will be honing in mostly on the Teams tab as that is sort of the focus for today. And that is just one small section of your Teams environment as a whole. But in any case, let's go ahead and visit that section now. So once we click into Teams, you'll notice you get a screen that looks like this that'll actually show you all the teams that you were both a part of and have previously created. And each team is presented to you in the form of this little, uh, of a little card for each one with the title of the team, of course. So as you can see, I am a part of uh, quite a few teams here. And I can go ahead and today we're gonna to create a new team from scratch. So we'll go ahead and Click on join or create team in the top right hand corner here. I can then click on create team and that'll begin the team creation process. Now today we're going to create a class team, but I will note here that you can create a number of other types of teams that will come with their own sort of functionality and default preferences set. So as you can see, there's the PLC type of team, a staff team or other. So we are going to be working with a class team today. So I'll go ahead and create a class team and I'll name this class team um, advanced English, for example. And we can give this class team a, name, uh, a description if we wanted to. We'll leave that blank for our purposes today. And from here, we can go ahead and hit next. But there is this little option that says create a team using an existing team as a template. If you've already created a class team before and you're creating another class team and you feel that uh, the way that you've created that other class team is good and you like the way that you've sort of created the different channels and the way that it is, you can essentially use that team as a skeleton or sort of a foundation for your new team if you wanted by clicking create a team using an existing team and then you just select whichever previously uh, created team you wanted to use as the template. But <clears throat> we will keep, we will be starting completely from scratch here so we're not going to be doing that I'll have to re-enter the name here really quickly. Advanced English. And we can go ahead and hit next. Once we do, once we hit next, this is where we will enter in the students that are a part of this class team. So we can go ahead and start typing in students' names here. I'll add Joni, Adele, <clears throat> Al, Alex. and Douglas here. <clears throat> All right, so these are the five students that I'm going to add to this class. Um, also, there is two different tabs here. Right now I'm in the students tab. If you are going to be utilizing this class as sort of a collaborative space for you and another teacher, for example, perhaps you're both leading this class or you're you know, um, alternating who is doing what thing in, in, in the class, you can add other teachers to the class as well so they have access to all of the same resources and all of the material that will be uh, be contributed to this team. We are going to add another teacher right now, but that is where um, that is how you would add another teacher is via this tab. And when you add someone as a teacher, it automatically gives them um, administrative privileges within that team, whereas the students have limited uh, permissions in terms of what they can do within the team because, because they are students, of course. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit add, <clears throat> and we will hit close. 
so now we've added those um, those students to our class team here, and it has now been created. So this is our main team, essentially our team homepage for this specific team. The first thing that we're going to want to do here is customize our team a tiny bit. So if we look over to the left hand side here, it tells us the name of this team, and then we have this red icon with the AE on the inside of it. You always want to give your uh, class team um, a custom icon just because <clears throat> if I, for example, go back to my all team section, if, if a student is a part of a lot of different teams uh, like this, for example, it can be hard to locate the exact one that they're looking for. So giving it a distinguishable icon is always a good idea as it kind of helps helps us remember where the team is, what the icon is, and we can kind of find it right away. You know, the algebra uh, team here is represented by the calculator, so I can honestly just look for the calcula calculator and find the algebra team right away. But in any case, let's go ahead and add an icon now to fulfill that purpose. The way we'll do that is we hover over where it, where the icon is, so where the AE is, and we can hit that little pencil. And now we can choose from a wide range of sort of pre-created icons. And these span from both grade level, as you can see right here, we can select a different grade level, as well as different subjects. So this class is an English class, so we can put in social studies, I suppose. And then we could find a an icon in here that is relevant so we have here a number of different ones perhaps you can select another one we can hit other oh, there we go and we can select one from here we'll select this open book one thing that i do want to mention is that you don't always have to select <clears throat> You don't always have to select the pre uh, sort of determined icons. You can also upload your own. If you have an image on your uh, device, for example, that would fit as the icon, you can go ahead and upload your own by clicking upload right there. But we're gonna go ahead and use that, that open book there and hit update. As you can see, that has changed the icon right here. And if we were to go back to our all teams area, it will have changed it in that area too. So now that we've done that, let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here in this main uh, class teams area. So under the name of the team, we have our different class resources, and that is the class notebook, the assignments, the grades, and the insights. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can click into any one of these to access the specific class resource. We will be going into class notebook very shortly. I will just mention that below we also have channels. And in channels, you can create uh, you know, different channels as different workspaces as well for your students. Um, by default, whenever you create a team, it creates a general channel, but you can create a new channel by you know, hitting more options right there, or sorry, in the top here. Right next to the title where it says advanced english there's that little ellipses if you click that you get the team options and in here you can add a channel so if we click add a channel maybe we want to make a channel for essay prep for example and hit add once we've done that that channel will appear in this channel list here and we can then start either sharing new files in this channel if we wanted to we could create a new post in this channel to be viewed by our students and that can help us sort of differentiate the different areas of this team and help the students kind of navigate um, work wherever it's most relevant um, based off of whatever channels you've already created and now the great thing also about channels is that you can <clears throat> create um, up to 30 of them and that can be a, quite the long list and each channel will have its own posts area as you can see right here and if you share any files within that channel they will appear within the channel itself um, within the post area but they will also appear in the files tab right up here so if you click into that files tab you will see a list of all of the files that have been shared within this specific channel. And you can even upload files to this area as well to make them directly accessible by anybody who has access to this team. And that would be uh, your students, of course. 
Let's go ahead and visit the class notebook now. So in the class notebook um, is where we have all of our different sections that each serve a specific purpose. Now, because we have not actually created the class notebook yet, we'll have to click set up and we can either set up from a blank notebook or from an existing notebook that we already have that might already have content within it. Uh, we do not have one, so we're going to go ahead and just create from blank. And this lets us know the different sections that are going to be created within this class notebook. So you can see there's four main areas. There's the collaboration space, the content library, the teacher only section and the student notebooks. So the collaboration space is where you will have your team wide um, area to contribute content to. So if, for example, um, I, the collaboration space, I myself as the teacher can visit this collabor collaboration space and edit and contribute content to it, and the students can do so as well. It's kind of a, a free form area for everybody to come and collaborate and contribute to. The content library is different in that only I as the teacher can actually contribute content to this area and <clears throat> the students can only view the content in that area. They cannot actually modify or, or contribute anything themselves. And that is a, a really great way to sort of um, publish any course materials, any um, outlines or agendas or anything that you may have that might need to be sort of additional information for your students can be put in the content library as it's a place where only you as the teacher can edit, whereas the students can only view the content in that section. The teacher only section is a private space for yourself as the educator or as the teacher. This is where you can perhaps prep any um, class materials, any content, even um, you can have your own lesson plans in this area as well if you wanted. <coughs> it's essentially a section that only you as the teacher can see. The students do not have access or visibility to anything that uh, goes on within that section. And then we have these student notebooks. So the student notebooks are similar to the teacher only section in that each student within your class will have their own sort of private area of the class notebook for them to do their own, you know, specific work within. The teacher can edit and view the content in each of the students private notebooks. However, the student cannot view others private notebooks. So if I have a student in a, a class notebook, they have their own private area of that notebook. And they can, of course, edit and contribute to their own work. And I, as the teacher, can go view that work. However, student A cannot look at student B's um, private notebook, for example. So that's that's kind of the distinction to be made there. We'll go ahead and we'll hit next. And now we get to choose what specific sections are contained within each student's private area. So by default, we'll have four main sections. We have handouts, class notes, homework, and quizzes. We can change these, you know, whatever sections we want to be included. Maybe we want one for, you know, essay practice, exam prep, for example. We can create the sections that we want to be included for these students' private notebooks. And that will be there for them as soon as we create this uh, class notebook. So we can either edit the ones that already exist, we can delete them, or we can add new ones right here by clicking add section. We'll go ahead and we will now hit create. <clears throat> so depending on how many sections you've created and depending on how many uh, things you have edited there, it might take a little sec there to load in the class notebook. And while that loads, we'll just give it a second here. Perfect. So we've now loaded into our class notebook. Let's talk a little bit about what is uh, what we're seeing right now and what's going on here. So in the class notebook, we can access all of the different areas that I just talked about by clicking on the little icon right here. It's sort of these three rectangles. Um, you can kind of take it as a sort of a bookshelf type of thing. We can click that <clears throat> and we can then see all of the different sections of this class notebook. Each section will have kind of a little default area that looks like this, which will tell you more about that specific area. And it kind of serves as a little description for each one. So this is the welcome tab that we're in right now that lets you know the initial sort of welcome process of your class notebook. 
We can then visit all of those sections that I was just talking about here. We have the main collaboration space that we can click into. That collaboration space then has a section within it <clears throat> that allows you to see how you can utilize and work with this um, with this class notebook in the collaboration space. And as a reminder, everybody can contribute to this space. All the students and all the teachers that are a part of this class can contribute and modify this space. <clears throat> we can always create new sections to be accessed by specific students or specific teachers, but we will get on, we, we will um, move on to sort of accessing permissions in just a second. Before that, I do wanna go over the other sections here though. We then have the content library. If we click into that, we have a new section that we can click into. And we see here that it lets us know how to get started with the content library. We can create um, new pages or new sections within this content library to publish class materials, any handouts, for example, that we wanted to. We could do that all within the content library. And I, as the teacher, am the only one who can actually modify anything within this section. So. Anything that's in the content library cannot be edited by students. The teacher only section is kind of similar. Again, this is just a space for me to work within as a teacher, a private space. I'm the only one that has visibility to the section. The students cannot see or edit anything that I put into the teachers only area here. And then finally, at the bottom, we have here the actual list of students. If we click on each student here, Adele, for example, <clears throat> it'll show us the sections that we predetermined for um, each student here. So essay practice, exam prep, and class notes. So again, I as the teacher can visit each one of these sections and see um, Adele's progress, see what she's currently working on. And Adele, of course, can contribute to this area as it is her own private area. Adele cannot view um, Alex's area or Douglas's area or vice versa. It's private to each student. If you look to the top right over here, we have a number of different tabs and these refer to sort of our use of the um, of the OneNote as a whole. So let's go ahead and actually create a new section within this collaboration space. We'll just hit add section. We'll give this section a name, um, you know, group work, for example. As you can see, we've now added a new section to the collaboration space. It's, it's presented in this little tab, and you know that it's a part of the collaboration space because it's sort of within the line of it. If you minimize the other sections here, you'll notice that collaboration space has two <clears throat> uh, tabs that we can visit, group work, and then there's the sort of initial um, the initial tab that you can that you can see, which is sort of the, the little getting started tab. But in any case, now that we have a blank um, tab here, a blank section, we can now have different pages within this section. As you can see here, it automatically creates one page. We can just name this page one, perhaps. Or we can then create another page, for example, you know, page two. And now we can start to work within this OneNote. If you ever used OneNote before, it functions pretty much in the exact same way as it would if you were using it outside of Teams or just in another um, sort of uh, medium or capacity. But in any case, we can add things to this. We can insert images. We can insert files and pictures, for example, as well as the ability to add in actual links that can have a watchable video directly within your class notebook. So. The, the ways in which you can utilize your class notebook and, and contribute to it are, are very vast and there's a whole ton of different features that you can access and explore by visiting each one of the different tabs up here. <clears throat> and now, as I mentioned the tabs up there, there is one called the class notebook tab. And if we visit that, we get the option right here to manage notebooks. If we click Manage Notebooks, we get to access um, some settings that have to do with our class notebook here. Here we can edit any of the predetermined sections that we laid out earlier on. Perhaps there's a new section that needs to be added to everybody's um, private notebook. We can go ahead and hit Add Section, and just say New Section Sample, for example, and hit Save. Once we've done that, we've now added a new section to all of the students' private notebooks for them to use. <clears throat> right here we have the ability to lock the collaboration space. 
if you want to lock the collaboration space and you want everything to essentially uh, remain frozen for the time being, that meaning that anything that has been added up until this point will remain, but if you lock it, whatever is in that collaboration space cannot be modified in any way until you unlock this again. So that's there for you if you ever need to do that. And one last thing that I will mention in terms of managing your class notebook settings is that you do get a number of additional settings if you open the class notebook in your browser because the browser application does have a couple of more settings and you can do so really easily. Right here it says open in browser. If you just click that and hit open in browser, it will open up the OneDrive application um, within whatever internet browser you use. We can go ahead and just expand this here. And now we have the very same class notebook open. We could utilize it in the exact same way, except this is opened directly within the OneNote application itself on the web versus being open within Teams. But anything that we do in one area will reflect in the other as they are, of course, uh, linked and synced. But in any case, if we visit the class notebook tab again and we go to manage notebooks again, there are a couple of, oh, I have to sign it again here. Give me one second. There we go. There are a couple of settings that were not available in the Teams um, version. So right here, we have the ability to actually change collaboration space permissions. And what this will do, if we click that, we can actually change who has permission to edit, view, and modify anything within any of the collaboration spaces that I've created. So we have here, we have two, um, main, we have two of the collaboration space sections. We have that initial uh, sort of getting started section and we'll open up the team here to, to take a look. So we have that initial section right here and then we have the group work one that we created just a second ago. And you see here they're both listed here. So I can actually edit the permissions for each of these sections and even add a new one. So perhaps I wanna add a new section. This is, you know, group alpha, for example. And now we only actually want this section to be accessible by a certain, um, you know, a certain list of students because they are the ones that are in this group and will be working on the content for this group. So we can go ahead and make it so that Adele, Alex, and Joni are the only ones that have access to this group here, and they then are the only ones that can contribute to anything within that collaborative workspace. If you want to turn this session, section on, you, this setting on, you can. This allows to this allows for any student who is not a part of the ones you've selected here. This allows for anyone who has not been selected to be able to view the um, the contents of that collaboration space, but they cannot edit anything in it. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and we'll create this new uh, section here. So now we can see here we have three sections in the collaboration space. One of them is group work that has all five students um, access to it. And one of them is group alpha, which now only has three students because we only included Adele, Alex, and Joni. And as you can see, you can always, um, you know, refine and edit these permissions as well. So if group alpha changes or another person is added to that group, we can always enable that collaboration space for one of another student there. That is permitting that they are a part of the class team as a whole. So that is how you would do that. And that is how you can sort of manage your different collaboration spaces. That way we now have, oh, we'll have to refresh this here. We now have, see these three sections here. We have group alpha, and this group is only accessible and um, you know editable by the individuals that I that I laid out earlier. So Alex, Adele, and um, Joni, for example.
So with that said, that is your sort of class notebook. I definitely, this is a really great tool to utilize with your students. It can be really um, enriching and engaging for them to sort of utilize these different collaborative spaces as well as their own private notebooks to um, um, create and you know do their own work, of course. And you do have a couple of resources as the teacher, such as the content library where you can put in any handouts or any um, anything that you've created as resources for the students for them to review, as well as your teacher only section where you can actually prepare these things and create them without the students actually um, seeing until you publish it to one of the public areas such as the collaboration space or the content library. With that said, we're going to go ahead and now visit the assignments tab. <clears throat> and we can access the assignments tab via the left navigation rail here. We have not created an assignment yet, so let's actually go ahead and do that. So we can hit get started. And this is where we can now create assignments that can be done. They can be turned in and assessed directly within this class team. So if we hit create, we can actually create an assignment or we can create a quiz that brings in the Microsoft Forms integration to actually uh, complete and create the quiz directly within Teams. So if you choose to create a quiz, it will actually be the, uh, if you ever used Microsoft Forms before, it will be the Forms creation that it brings in to sort of help you do that. But we're gonna go ahead and create an assignment first here. So let's go ahead and click assignment. And now we walk through the assignment creation details. So the title of this assignment is going to be, let's say um, analytical essay, for example. And we can go ahead and now provide instructions for this um, assignment. So we could put in any instructions that we have, as well as attach an actual document here. So if you have sort of a pre, uh, if you already have a document that has the, the assignment instructions, you can simply attach it by clicking attach. And you can attach it from your OneDrive, or if it was posted in your class notebook, you can attach it directly from there as well. So we could go select our OneDrive, <clears throat> And we could then attach this assignment um, details here. So we don't, we're not actually going to um, attach a file, but that is how you would do so. You would just either select one from your OneDrive or another um, area that you're pulling from. And then the students would then be able to, when they're viewing this assignment, uh, rather than reading the instructions provided, um, if there are none, they can access the file that you've attached instead. Right here, we can give this assignment a point value. We can make this out of 100, for example, or we can even add a rubric. And this is a rubric that you've either already created, for example, we could upload a rubric if we wanted by clicking upload rubric. And then we could then um, select a rubric that we've already created, or we can create one directly within the Teams um, application here by hitting add rubric. Once you hit add rubric, you will come to the rubric creation um, <clears throat> area here where we can give this, we can just name this analytical, oops, analytical essay. We can add a description if we want, and we can then go ahead and start creating our grading criteria. As you can see, it's laid out like a normal rubric would be you can edit any one of these fields that you want you can add new fields if you want as well either uh, on the horizontal axis or on the vertical axis and you can essentially create a rubric in the exact same way that you would uh, normally the great thing about this is, is that once we actually create this rubric we can then attach it to the um the assignment there and we can use that rubric to then grade it later on down the line however once you actually already, once you create a rubric within Teams, it'll actually save within the rubric section here. So you can see that I already have a couple of rubrics that I already created that I can then just, you know, use one of these instead if I feel that it applies, of course. So I can go ahead and just select this grading rubric and hit next. And then we can actually see uh, what the rubric looks like and we can hit attach. And also keep in mind that 
with that rubric, you can um, you can change the fields as well, even if you are using one that you have already created by hitting edit right here. Here we'll have where this assignment is going to be assigned to. Because we're creating it directly within the class, it's being assigned to the advanced English class team that we have here. But if we click this, we can actually select another class to assign this assignment to. So we could assign it to English 101 as well if we wanted, and that would be us assigning this assignment to two different classes. We will keep it at just the one though. We'll only be assigning it to advanced English for now. If we move over, we can see that it's being assigned to all students. We can change that if we wanted to by only assigning it to individual students. If this is perhaps, um, you know, a student by student assignment that is customizable for each one, you can then assign it to individual students only, and you could then select who this assignment would apply to right here. And this would again be pulling from the um, individuals who are who the students who are a part of this class team. We can set the due date here. We can select this to be due perhaps on the 10th of September at 11.59 p.m. And you can actually click edit right here to go a little deeper with the due date time. So you can set a start date that is in the future, for example. So you can schedule to assign this assignment. So maybe you're creating the assignment now, but you don't actually want it to be uh, visible by the students until, uh, you know, this upcoming Friday, for example. And so that means that once we select a start time here, it'll start at 9 a.m. on the Friday. The assignment will be posted on Friday and they then have until the 10th to complete it. If you want to accept late turn-ins, but you want to have a hard close date on the assignment, you can enable the close date right here. And this will mean that Let's say this, the day, the due date is September 10th, but we will accept assignments up until the 17th. And that'll be sort of the late window that they can turn assignments in. But after the, after the 17th, this assignment will be officially closed and no more um, assignment turn-ins will be accepted. So you can kind of put in a little grace period there if you want it as well. And we will actually keep that close date there and hit done. And then finally at the bottom, we have here the ability to add the assignment to the calendars of the students. We can go ahead and select from the dropdown students only, students and me, or students and team owner. So we'll go ahead and put students and me so that everybody can remember it. <clears throat> and we can then actually post, um, choose where to post the assignment notifications. So currently it's being posted to, to the general channel, which is where we, which is this channel we have here. Since we already have actually an essay prep channel and this is an essay assignment, we can actually hit edit and make it so that this, the um, notification for this assignment will be posted in essay prep instead. And that way it keeps things you know, more relevant. And that is of course why we've created the channels in the first place is to have these you know, categorized workspaces where um, different type of work can go on and the students can find things a little easier in that way as well. But in any case, we can go ahead and hit assign to assign this assignment and that way the students will be able to actually view the assignment and see the details and start on it if they want. Or we can choose to save and this will save this assignment to our drafts and we could return back to this assignment later on down the line <clears throat> and perhaps assign it later or um, just keep it as a backup for you know a later date. But if you hit save, the, the students will not see the assignment. It will not be posted. Only if you hit assign will it be posted. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit assign here. We've now assigned, we've now officially posted this assignment. And if we go, if we're in our er, our assignments tab, we do see here that the analytical essay is listed. So any assignments that you create will always be listed in the assignments tab of that particular uh, class. Now, as you can see here, I've just received the notification and that is the actual notification of the assignment being posted within the channel that we selected. So the essay prep channel now has that one post. It's the analytical essay. The students would receive this notification and they could actually just visit this channel and hit view assignment. 
and it would bring them to the assignment um, and they would see you know all the details that we set out because we are the teacher we're seeing the details um, as the teacher would see them we can see if the assignment has been turned in yet we can provide uh, feedback for the assignment it have, if it has been turned in by clicking on the little uh, speech bubble right there but we will talk a little bit more about actual feedback and grades once we move on to the grade section in just a short little while there but we'll go back to the assignments area here really quickly and while you're in the assignments area, like I said, you'll you'll see all the assignments that you have posted and you can click into the assignment to view what I was just looking at. So I can click that analytical essay to see kind of the progress of every individual of every student that has posted and let's say this is an assignment where they have to submit a first draft and we'll review it and then return it back to them. Let's say Douglas here actually turned in his first draft. We could then take a look at the first draft, give him some feedback if we wanted. <clears throat> and once that's done, we could select Douglas here and hit return. And that would then return the um, assignment back to him with any revisions or any feedback that we've provided. So that kind of brings us to our next um, area here, which is the grades area. Now, <clears throat> to take a look at this area, I'm actually going to visit one of the teams that I've already uh, built out in a little more detail. So we're going to visit the language arts team here, and we're just going to visit the grades area just to see the grades area sort of more fully built out. <clears throat> So as you can see here in the grades area, it'll present to you the assignments for this specific class along the top. So we have the audience essay, modes of persuasion quiz, school newspaper, analytical essay, and letter of introduction. So we have here the assignments along the top and they are, long, um, they are listed uh, chronologically. So uh, by most recent will be on the, um, the left here and it'll sort of go chronologically in that way. And then we have the students listed along the left hand side. So we see here Enrico, for example, he we gave him a 25 on the school newspaper and that is out of a potential 25. We've returned his analytical essay and we gave him a 20 out of 25 on the letter of introduction. You can always change these grades in this area by simply clicking on the box there and maybe we accidentally gave Ella a 24 out of 25 but she actually got a 25 out of 25. We could then edit the number grade right there really quickly. For deeper feedback, you can actually view the assignment in more detail by clicking on the ellipses right there and hitting open student work. Once we hit open student work, here we have Ella's essay that she turned in. We could look through the, the essay opens up in Word directly within, um, directly within the team's application here and we can actually utilize word in the exact same way that we would if we were using the application separately so we can make any revisions that we want we can see here that i've actually added a couple of comments to um to ella's essay here to further provide even more specific feedback and the way that you can actually add a comment in in this particular example if you're looking at an essay or a written assignment of any sort you can actually highlight any you know passage or, or sentence or whatever the case may be we can highlight that and then we can hit new comment right there or you can right click on the highlight and hit um, new comment as well right here so we can add a new comment to this specific uh, passage that she entered here great quote this was integrated very nicely for example and we get it sent so now when we return this assignment here, Ella will actually be able to see all of the comments that we made right along here and <clears throat> we'll actually be able to give her sort of overall feedback along the right hand side here. So we have here the feedback that um, I left, which was wonderful start. See my comments in the rubric and that brings us to the rubric. So if you if you've attached a rubric to an assignment, when you're accessing the assignment via the grading, you can actually grade the assignment directly from the rubric. So if we click the rubric, we can see here all of the different fields for that rubric. We have organization, level of content, style, format. 
So we can see here, we can select whichever criteria that Ella met on her essay. We, we selected excellent, oops, select excellent there. We select excellent for this one as well. And for each, um, for each area of the rubric, we can add specific comments to it as well in the little feedback section right here. So for level of comment, we maybe select fair. And we can say in the feedback here, we said you need more analysis in your essay. So you can see here, the grading can go pretty in depth and you can actually click on the drop down here to see each uh, sort of area of the rubric that you've predetermined when you were either creating or attaching it in the assignment creation process. So we can go to the format section, for example, we can select good and we can say, you know, great citations in this first draft. However, you need a couple of more to round out your argument. So that's the feedback that we've given and we've given this, uh, we've selected good there. So now once Ella actually receives this um, assignment, once we return it back to her with that assign, with that return um, option, she'll see not only whatever we've selected on the rubric, but also the feedback that we've given for each section of the rubric as well and including all of these comments that we left specifically in the essay. So as you can see, there's a lot of different ways to provide feedback. And of course, um, there is no such thing as too much feedback. It's always helpful to provide feedback in a number of different ways, whether it's via the rubric or just via the um, overall assignment feedback, as well as the in assignment uh, comments that we've also left here. So once we feel as the teacher that we've done everything here, we've provided feedback on all fronts, we can go ahead and hit return and this will return the assignment back to Ella for her to review and then perhaps, you know, make any adjustments um, based off of the feedback that we've given. And you'll notice that directly from within this area, if I want to look at another student's assignment, for this specific uh, assignment, I can go ahead and select from the drop down menu. Maybe we want to look at Adele's essay for this assignment here. You can just select Adele, and here we have the the um, the same assignment, but from a different student, of course. So this kind of helps you develop your own workflow of how you want to grade. If you want to do all of them at once, or if you want to go sort of one by one in this way, you can. And you can kind of click through in the arrows as well to go to the next student, depending on um, what they've <clears throat> what they've turned in. Now, in this case, we're, it's unable to display this file. I think uh, Fatimi here uploaded the wrong file, but in any case, that's something that we would have to take to uh, Fatima privately. But if we close out of this assignments area, or out of this grading area, you'll notice that on the left hand side in our navigation panel, we also have a separate assignments tab. In this assignments tab, we can view all of the assignments that we have actually assigned across all of the classrooms that we are um, a part of or responsible for. So. We can see here that there are a ton of assignments that we've already assigned. Now, <clears throat> there is that audience essay we looked at earlier, the analytical essay we created um, a couple of minutes ago that's due on September 10th. So we're seeing essentially all the assignments that we've created and assigned um, and that are still you know, within their, their due date, of course. And these are for all our classes. We can filter out for specific classes if we wanted to. Maybe we only want to look at the language arts um, assignments. And here we have any assignments that we've assigned within the language arts class. Now, <clears throat> anything that you do in this area is pretty much the same as working within the actual class team and vi visiting either the assignments and grades area. It's just a separate sort of, uh, it's sort of just a different way of accessing that information. Rather than going class by class, you can kind of view it on an overall sort of umbrella way of seeing all of the assignments that you've assigned and then filtering them out accordingly if you wanted to by selecting each class. <clears throat> but essentially this this assignments area is just an extension of the the grades and assignments tabs within each of your specific classrooms <clears throat> that you've created. 
Now, there is one last thing that I uh, do want to mention here, and that is the ability to actually give praise to your students. So let's say that we are, you know, we have this, let's go back to our, our advanced English channel here, our advanced English team here. We're in essay prep, and let's say that we go ahead and we want to give praise to a specific student based off of any uh, any of their accomplishments or anything that they've done recently or, or 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 just pretty much anything that you would give praise for you can do so directly within teams and there's there is actually something built in to help you do this in a more sort of streamlined and engaging way so within any channel perhaps we'll actually go to the general channel to do this we can hit new conversation and there is this little metal button on the bottom of the chat box here. If we click that, that opens up the praise window. And here we can select which sort of type of praise that we want to give. <clears throat> there is a number of different ones. You know, there's courage, thank you, achiever. There's kind of overall ones like awesome or creative, for example. We can go ahead and select creative if we want to give that type of praise. And then we can select the student or students that we want to give this praise to. So we can go ahead and you know select Joni, for example. And we can say, uh, great job to Joni for coming up with a very creative solution that we had during class today, for example. So we're giving praise to Joni here. We've selected the creative badge to give her, and we've put her into the recipients there. You can always give praise to multiple students if, if it applies, but for now, we're just giving it to Joni. And we can go ahead and hit preview to see what that card will look like to us and to the rest of the team there. And we can go ahead and hit send. <clears throat> so now Joni will receive a notification for this praise and she'll be able to um, acknowledge it and and um, reply to it by hitting reply within the actual post in the channel. And the other students can also choose to reply if they'd like as well. Sort of engage and also congratulate Joni on her achievement here. If you don't want, if you want to praise a student but do so um, privately, you can also praise um, directly within a one on one chat as well. If you visit the, the chat area here, let's say we have this chat with Arden. If we want to praise Arden, we would essentially do the exact same thing, just clicking the little praise icon and then doing it uh, directly within this chat. So then only Arden would actually be able to see the praise rather than the, um, the team actually being able to see it if we did it within the team's channel. But that actually brings us to the end of our um, content today. We do have a couple minutes left and I will at this point just go ahead and take a look at the chat area here to see if we did have any um, outstanding questions. And it is looking like we don't have any current questions, but if you have anything that's come to mind now, you are more than welcome to <clears throat> come off of mute at this point to ask your question if you want. And I will give everyone um, a couple of minutes. We do have a couple minutes left, so I will give everyone some time there to think if you have anything that comes to mind. Um, while we do so, I will mention that there has been a survey that was posted to the chat there. And that survey is meant to be a reflection of my own abilities as a presenter. It's not so much meant to reflect teams or class teams or the content, but more so if I did a good job, if I was clear, if the content was understandable, definitely let me know via the use of that survey. It is a very short survey. It should take you uh, probably less than, I would say, 30 seconds to a minute to fill out. And if you're especially pressed for time, only that first question is actually uh, required to fill out in order to um, complete the survey. So you can um, uh, take that option if you would like as well. And the uh, a passing score on that survey is considered a nine or higher. So uh, keep that in mind as well if you do fill it out. But of course, thank you in advance if you do happen to fill that out. And at this point, we will go ahead and just stop for questions if there are any.
Perfect. Well, while uh, uh, Augustino is Jeff, I'm back again. And uh, perfect. Well, if people have questions, they can ask in a question in a minute. But I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for your time today. Um, and uh, it, uh, I, I learned some new stuff. And I awesome. spend, uh, <laughs> my days are filled with teach, showing teachers how to how to use Teams. So <laughs> it's uh, it's all good. We were uh, excited to ha again partner with Microsoft. So thank you and, and Runa for dropping by today. And uh, hopefully um, it was beneficial for teachers. Don't forget to fill out uh, the survey for Augustino and Ruta, for Runa. And also don't forget to enter to win uh, one of the prize packs at the end of the day. And that is also posted in the chat, both of those. So um, look forward to seeing you all. and. Uh, um, we'll just leave the room open, but uh, you guys can uh, can if you have questions, you can go ahead and ask those.